Hello everyone and welcome to another game design video. My name is Josh, glad you're here. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about game jams, specifically the Triple Tri Jam, which is a game jam I did a few weeks ago. The premise of the Triple Tri Jam is it's a regular game jam, but you only have nine hours to do it and this has to be done in three, three hour chunks. The themes for this Triple Tri Jam were chain reaction, negative feedback loops, and a novel twist on classic games. My approach going into the game jam was that I wanted something that could hit all three themes, and I really focused on that novel twist on, on a classic game theme. The first game that really came to mind, funnily enough, was Flappy Bird, mostly because it was 2D, and given that I'd be working in Unity, I really didn't want to make something relying on Unity's 3D, not that I wasn't confident I could do something at the time, but just that I felt 3D was going to make things more complicated. So going from Flappy Bird, I try to figure out what games I can mix with it to make a fun experience that had negative feedback loops and chain reactions. And the first thought that came from that train of thought was Tetris. I felt Tetris would best use the chain reaction and negative feedback loop themes. Chain reaction from obviously making a Tetris and seeing all the blocks disappear. And the negative feedback loop theme from Tetris's native difficulty increase as you survive longer through the game. Ultimately, the game combination would come from mostly Flappy Bird being your main control scheme, flapping around and trying to avoid towers, but these towers being able to be broken with Tetris pieces that you pick up along the way so that you can quote-unquote make a Tetris and have that chain reaction of seeing those towers get destroyed. Obviously, the negative feedback loop comes in as more towers make it harder to get through later on in the game. So with my thought process out of the way of how I was intending to approach the game and developing it, let's actually go into that nice juicy devlog footage. Going to part one of this game jam, I wanted to have a character on the screen who could actually move like Flappy Bird, which means when you press whatever key, he jumps, he falls down due to gravity, he starts tipping over a little bit due to gravity, and the camera will always follow. So I went into Pisco App and made what I thought would just be a placeholder sprite for the character. This didn't end up being the case, and ultimately my game star was a green dude with a wing, angry anime eyes, and a frown. After making the sprite, I went back into Unity and actually made the programming for the character. So this obviously included the jumping, the camera follow, and that tipping due to gravity. That tipping due to gravity I thought would be a polished touch at the very end, but I managed to get it all included while I was just making the general code for the character. Besides that, the most difficult part at this stage was getting the jump height to feel right. This first part of character building took about 20 to 25 minutes, and at this stage I wanted to focus on making the obstacles and the obstacle generation for the game. I started off by drawing just a simple brick wall before I realized I wanted to actually add more of the Tetris elements into the wall design. This led me to making, initially, one wall with a bunch of holes in it that you could insert Tetris pieces into. This step was also nice because, along with making those Tetris themed holes, I now had all the Tetris pieces I actually needed for when I wanted to add in power-ups or projectiles later on. Along this process, I had the itching to also make some UI, so I looked at Tetris and saw how they handle the hold piece area, so really I just ended up making a Tetris grid of sorts to actually have the hold piece UI for whenever you are holding your shot before you fire it. After making the hold piece UI, I went back in and actually started working on the gameplay. So in this case, it was being able to shoot a piece out and collide with a Tetris block to make a quote-unquote Tetris. Due to the way Unity handles 2D box colliders when you import sprites, the colliders I was getting weren't actually covering the entirety of the pieces that I wanted. They would just take it as one giant rectangle, when in reality I needed gaps to account for those Tetris pieces that I wanted to shoot into the blocks. This led to a decent amount of time spent needing to customize those 2D box colliders and even add more colliders onto them so I'd have the hitboxes that I needed. Ultimately, this first chunk of the game jam ended on a positive note with having the obstacle generation in, but also on a bad note because I was running into a lot of collision issues with the projectiles and the actual Tetris blocks themselves. By the second chunk of the game jam, I had a lot of things done, but there was still a lot of things to do. I had obstacle generation in place and I had the player movement and controller all figured out. However, I was still running into bugs with projectiles not actually destroying the obstacles. I'd say the biggest error I made at this point was for some reason deciding that every Tetris piece needed its own corresponding obstacle to break, rather than just normal Tetris rules where any piece, if it makes a Tetris, actually destroys the obstacle. This definitely became a potential time issue, given that on this day I happened to spend I think about an hour to an hour and a half creating all the different assets for all these different projectiles, obstacles, and then having to do all the collider information on these different game objects that I just made. On the bright side, I could say I had a lot of different content. On the other side, I probably could have used that time better and not have spent so much time on these very specific objects. 
A nice consolation though is that since all the projectiles and all the actual obstacles basically use the same code, it was really just a case of testing all of them to make sure they could collide properly with their respective objects. I did run into some issues here since I was already running into collision issues earlier, but that seemed to all sort itself out to some extent by the end of the day. By the end of the second chunk of the game jam, I also had object pulling in for all these different obstacles, and I also had all the projectiles able to be picked up in-game and used for the player. Moving into the final chunk of the tri jam, I managed to fix up the projectile issues I was running into, and I already had all of my quote-unquote difficulty measures set up, where as you get further in the game, you'd run into more difficult obstacles. Most of the time I used on this chunk was making UI to explain the controls to the player, making a title screen, and playtesting the game to make sure that everything was working properly. In hindsight though, I probably could have and should have used better UI to explain how to actually rotate the Tetris pieces. There's no real way on the player to explain it, and I kind of just explained the rules and the controls as just use Q and E to rotate the piece in your hold box. However, there's nothing there that really explains, oh, when you shoot out the piece, it'll be rotated in the same orientation. In the final hour or so of my work, I decided to add in a few other little touches. I added an icon so that if you were to download the game off of itch, it would actually show up with that icon on your Windows machine. And I also added in a button on the title screen that redirects to my Twitter. The last part of the game that was definitely rushed, and honestly, if I was going to go back and redo this, I just would have skipped it all together and just kept the default Unity solid color skybox, was me trying to get a background working in a very, very limited amount of time that I was not confident in my abilities to actually implement. I was trying to go through a bunch of different methods in about 15 minutes to actually have a backdrop that isn't just the default Unity skybox. So I tried it, it looked like it worked, I went back through it, some things were still a little bit wrong, but I said I just want to have a nice little backdrop to this, and I ultimately got it in, but I think that actually ended up causing some problems in the final build. So let that be a lesson to you kids, if you only have 15 minutes left in your game jam, don't try to rush adding content in, just submit the thing. So looking back on my performance in the triple tri jam, how do I think I did? I didn't do great, but I don't think I did awful either. In terms of what I didn't do so great on, visuals, I'm not the greatest pixel artist. Audio, not even in the game entirely, and that's because I wasn't even really thinking about audio going through the whole game making process. I was just really focused and kind of tunnel visioned solely on the gameplay. I do think I could have used my time a little better, especially with that whole, oh, all the Tetris pieces need their own colored blocks. Hindsight, that was really stupid, and I really should have used that time on other areas like making the game better or adding in better effects. In other areas, though, I'm really happy about the work that I did, mainly being able to get this done in nine hours. I am not the greatest with Unity 2D since I just haven't used it in that long, and I was using a tutorial to help me understand an endless runner, quote unquote, but you know, this isn't really an endless runner, it's more like an endless lappier, an endless flyer, something along those lines. But I'm glad I was able to not solely use everything from that tutorial and actually modify a lot of it to suit what I needed, like with the obstacle generation, the pickup generation, etc. I'm also kind of impressed that I managed to get all the art assets that I really wanted in by the end, though like I said in hindsight, probably didn't need all that. I honestly probably could have just had three blocks, colored them differently, and just set up the code that way to have different colors collide, if I wanted to do it the same way I was handling it before. Though talking about it like this, it does make me want to try doing something like a procedural Tetris chunk generator, now that I'm actually talking it through. Honestly, I'm just really happy I did the game jam in hindsight. It gave me the motivation to want to do more game jams. I'm going to be trying to do another one sometime in the coming weeks for the Brackies game jam, and also having done the Game Makers Toolkit jam, I feel that doing this game jam gave me the confidence and the motivation to actually want to do more. I mean, hey, doing that game jam made me want to actually have the footage recorded since it was only nine hours worth of footage and talk about it later on in this type of video. And with that, we've reached the end of the video. Before I go, a big thanks to my buddy Gunnar Clovis. You can follow him on Twitter, at Gunnar Clovis. He helps organize a lot of the stuff for Tri Jam and actually helped run this triple Tri Jam. Uh, so thanks to him for telling me about this and partly for getting me off my butt to actually work on this game jam in the first place. I hope you liked the video, comment about what you want to see next from me, subscribe to the channel, do all that nice stuff to raise engagement. Uh, you can follow me here on YouTube or on Twitter at jmargamedesign. And with that, thank you so much for watching once again, and I'll see you next time.